going on, Dodgers Nation? Doug McCain here. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. For all things Dodger baseball, be sure to subscribe to the Dodgers Nation YouTube channel for the latest Dodgers news, rumors, high videos, podcasts, and more. You're going to find it right here. So be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and if you want to see us post even more Dodgers content, smash that like button. And as always, I want your takes down below in the comments section. Today's Dodgers Nation question of the day. Do you think that the way that Corey Seager performs for the rest of the season and the postseason will ultimately determine whether or not the Dodgers decide to sign him up long term? And also, do you consider Corey Seager a must sign? I want your takes down below in the comments section. And for all the latest Dodgers news, head over to DodgersNation.com. So Corey Seager was the hottest player on the planet in the 2020 postseason. He carried the Dodgers throughout the NLCS and the World Series. He took home the NLCS MVP and the World Series MVP, and he was outstanding. It was a Corey Book year for Corey Seager. This year hasn't been the same. He's only played in 37 games, and in those 37 games, he slashed 265, 361, 422 with a 783 OPS and a 117 OPS plus a 1. 20 WRC plus only four bombs for Corey Seager and this is the year we really thought he was going to take that leap that he was going to be an MVP contender that he might hit over 40 home runs but unfortunately as has been the case for most of his career injuries always are a part of the equation when it comes to Corey Seager and this year has been no different he got hit by a Ross Detweiler pitch he broke his hand he's been out since mid-May as far as his rehab has gone we've had some good news we've also heard about some setbacks well the latest is positive here's dave roberts on the latest with Corey seager he's gonna head home from for a couple days uh, and then he is going to go to arizona uh while we're in colorado and he'll take uh at bats uh simulated games some uh games that will be going on down there um and uh, once we finish that Colorado series, we'll uh, reassess and uh, see where he's at physically and uh, make a decision then. So uh, right now, Jorge, there's no thought of a rehab assignment. It's more of just getting live at bats in Arizona. Um, but if he needs those and feels that he needs those to get ready, we'll do that. Um, but we're very uh, open to kind of... Uh, you know what Corey feels is best for to prepare him to come back he, he's taking now i would say 50 to 50 swings a day now so very encouraging news right there from Dave Roberts because Corey Seager, he fractured the fifth metacarpal in his right hand and sometimes injuries like that can linger. It can take a while for guys to get their swings back, to get their rhythm back. But it looks like it's now sooner than later when it comes to Seager's return and I think that's going to be big. The Dodgers have 71 games left in this season. He's played 37 games this year. I think he wants to get to as close to 100 games as possible because he wants to go in there, get his rhythm back, get in a groove before the postseason and I think the longer it takes him to get back the more he could potentially press because it's going to take some time. It's going to take 50 to 100 at bats for him to really get into the swing of things once again so the later he waits the more he might potentially press because he will be entering free agency after this season. Now what I want to see from Seager when he comes back I want to see him become Corey Slugger once again because last year his isolated power that was at 278 a career high this year it was at 150 56. What's isolated power? It's a statistic that measures raw power, only extra base hits. And last year, you saw those home runs. You saw those doubles. And this year, those were down to start the season. So I want to see him come back and hit for power. And the reason I say that, because if I'm going to commit to Corey Seager long term, if I'm going to give him that bag and pay him upwards of $200 plus million, it's for what he can do with the bag. Because to me, that is what he needs to be all about. Look, if I have The Rock in my movie, it's not because I think he's a great actor. It's because I want to watch him be badass and entertaining and blow stuff up. And I want to see Corey Seager blow baseballs up. And that's, to me, what makes him so intriguing, what he can do with the stick. Hitting doubles, hitting home runs, maybe moving to third base or maybe moving to first base or playing the occasional DH. But I don't see him as a long-term solution at shortstop. And I think that you need an infield with a stronger defensive presence. And Corey Seager, I continue to see his defense erode as far as range goes. And you just 
see it out there on the field. Now, I'm not saying that Gavin Lux is the future solution, but if I'm going to sign up Corey Seager, it's with the understanding that there's going to be a position change in the near future. Because if you're LA, the value from a big Corey Seager contract is only going to come from offensive production. It's not going to be defense. Also, the shortstop position, it is a very demanding position. The longer he plays it, the more increased his injury risk is. So I think if you're Corey Sear, you'd be wise to bow out of the shortstop position because I think you'll stay on the field longer long term. And I think that you can focus on what you do best. And that is ripping the cover off of baseballs in the box. Now, the next question is, how big will the remainder of the season be when it comes to signing Corey Seager? How big of a factor will the last part of the season play in the Dodgers' decision to offer him a big contract? Well, I think it's going to be big because, yes, even though it is going to be a small sample size and the Dodgers have had so much time to evaluate Corey Seager, if he does come back and he does play great, you're going to get more teams that are going to want to pursue him in free agency. We've seen teams in recent years, they go on one-year hype. And guys that are the hottest name on the block and finish strong, guys like Trevor Bauer, who wrote a 60-game season into being the highest paid player in baseball for a single season contract. So let's say Corey Seager lights the world on fire once again. I think you have a lot of teams out there that'll be willing to offer him a lucrative contract. So he could play himself out of being a Dodger if he goes crazy because I just don't see the Dodgers entering a big bidding war for Corey Seager. They didn't do it with Mookie Betts. They extended him before he even got to free agency because they like what they saw and the Dodgers know Corey Seager better than anyone. So we'll see what their trainers, what their inside intel tells them about his injury history because I think that could be a potential big holdup for this Dodger team. Do you really want to give a guy a massive contract that has this injury history? Now, I will add that John Heyman reported before the season that the Dodgers did make an attempt to extend him before the season began. So they are interested, but I think it's at their price. I think the Dodgers want to bring him back at a fair price. They don't want to overpay for him, but I definitely think they want to bring him back. But I think that they want to get the most value out of it. And I don't think it's going to be one of those situations like a Mookie Betts where they're willing to go crazy with it at $365 million or a deal we saw Clayton Kershaw sign earlier in his career where the Dodgers made Kershaw the first $200 million pitcher in baseball history. I don't think it's going to be one of those situations for the Dodgers. I don't think they consider him a must sign. I would love to see him back, but at the right price. But let me know down below in the comment section. Do you consider Corey Seager a must sign for the Dodgers and how big will his performance the rest of the year go in determining how his contract will go with the Dodgers? Let me know down below in the comment section. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. That's at DMAC underscore LA. For all things Dodger baseball, be sure to subscribe to the Dodgers Nation YouTube channel for the latest Dodgers news, rumors, high videos, podcasts, interviews, and more. You're going to find it right here. So be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and if you want to see us post even more Dodgers content, smash that like button. For the latest Dodgers Nation t-shirts, head over to gearup.la. We've got an all-star sale going on right now. A lot of hot new merch, so check that out over at gearup.la. For the latest Dodgers news, head over to dodgersnation.com. And until next time, think blue, bleed blue, and I'm out.